Okay, guys, how are you today? Let's get this party started. It's incredible stuff. Uh, I'm curious about this video somebody sent in there. It's from August the Duck. It says, YouTuber fakes miscarriage for donations. No one's ever faking Mr. Carriages, though. Sad stuff. Um, this doesn't look real. Is she actually, like, what's she using, like, a prosthetic a belly? I guess we'll find out on this episode of Dragon Ball Duck. Lied about being pregnant as a joke. This Ah, uh, yes, of course, the joke angle. Higher stunt has been an advertisement for my Patreon. Well, guys, what is she selling on Patreon? Because that's pretty in line. Horrible, mean, rude stunts and uh, public silliness to plug particular types of content. So as today's going to be rough. These days, it's really not that often. Uh, rough, more like today's going to be quack. <laughs> then I see an internet personality do something that leaves me wondering Sorry. what could that person have possibly <laughs> been thinking? I've seen a lot of this. Uh, probably trying to plug their uh, sussy Patreon. Thank you for the $5 from Jack Esposito. Hey, oh, Papa, I took my mom to watch Planet of the Apes. I want to thank Mama, Mary, and St. Monica for all the good mothers out here on Mother Earth. Okay, incredible. I appreciate that. My wife and I actually just watched the first three Planet of the Apes movies yesterday and the day before. Uh, and now we're going to watch other stuff. We're going to probably watch a new one soon this week. Maybe we'll go to the movies. Points. However, thankfully for me and these bills I've got to pay, internet <laughs> person- Because he's a duck! Nowadays <laughs> are really good at coming up with dumb shit to do. And today we've got something pretty out there, guys. Yeah. On this channel, we've seen people do some pretty funky stuff in order to make money. People doing questionable things in order to make a dollar is nothing new. And Yo. really, how questionable something is- $20 is $20, baby, if you know what I'm saying. Is kind of down to personal opinion. A lot of the times when I tell somebody what I do for a living, they find it kind of questionable. However, Absolutely, I can make myself laugh. There are certain things that I think we can all safely agree are objectively <laughs> questionable, if not worse. Give me an example, you ask. Okay, well, let me think. Uh, I don't know, maybe like uh, faking a miscarriage for Patreon support? What the? What is, what's just, what is this? What's on her page? Is this what's on her Patreon? This isn't even worth subscribing to. What is this? That's kind of a wacky idea, right? Well, apparently not to the YouTuber Caroline Constnar. Who, yes? Caroline Cornstar. Yep, that makes sense. <laughs> I, I kind of want to just see what their Patreon is. For researching purposes, of course, because I'm a researcher. People know that. Um, Is this her? You know, it's how, not how long has she been around for? Let's see. Oh, okay. I have an announcement. I lost the baby. This is horrible. Why would you do this? I'm probably going to watch these as part of it, but this is horrible. I'm this, is <laughs> this is just a horrible thing to do. She's been going for five years, so it seems to me like she ran out of content to talk about. That's what I would assume is, like, number one. Um, and then, like, I thought she had a Patreon. Where is it? It's, oh, she's artistic. And that's not some kind of uh, is a euphemism, the right word? No. She's one of those artsy types that thinks that like everything can be art and she's obnoxious. This makes perfect sense to me now. Yeah. All incredible. You know what I used to do with glue when I was younger? I used to put glue all over my hands and wait for it to dry and then I'd peel it off. That's just a relatable experience, I think. Thank you for the five dollars from Chris. Hey oh Papa, long time gooner, first time watcher. I just wanted to show some support. I appreciate that, brother. I genuinely do. That means a lot to me. Well, I love you. Yesterday, as of recording this, did a little bit of a prank on her audience, faking a miscarriage in order to get people to click on a video where she is advertising her Patreon. Now, when you hear this, you might wait. I'd be thinking to get people to click on a video where she is advertising her Patreon. Now, when well, where's the where's the Patreon? I'm I'm curious about it. I lost the baby. Is it in the oh? It's in the description. I'm so stupid. I thought okay, whatever. When you hear this, you might be thinking, what? And yeah, that's kind of the same mindset I was in when somebody DM'd me about this situation because I had no idea who this person was. And I only say that because I feel like my opinion of this individual, which at this point is... Bro, it's just like, what the fuck is this? $7.23 for Little Guppies, exclusive life vlog updates monthly. I'm so certain. No refunds, no money. What is this? Big dogs. I don't have a Twitter. Okay, it's just her talking about stuff. Dude, I thought that there was going to be something, some dirty stuff on here. I'm not trying to be rude, but like what, like that's the only time that any, like any, um, advertisement of yourself or any attention is, is good attention is specifically when you're going to pr promote that type of degenerate content, right? Because if you're some, like if you're, all your updates are lifestyle, like, oh, here's what I've been doing. Um, you'll get exclusive update videos that detail where I've really been doing for the past five years. I don't care unless this is boobs. I don't know, but this is what might be what it is actually. But I feel like if you're $300, oh my God. 
But if that's the kind of if you if you make she makes a thousand dollars a month. Wow, that's incredible. How is only a thousand dollars a month from five hundred and eighty five members? The lowest is seven. I don't care. But the only time that you're going to be able to pull it off is if you're doing like sussy abaka content, right? Because people don't care. The guys are disgusting degenerates. They don't care. They'll you know they'll they'll beat it to anything. But if you have like a lifestyle vlog where you're posting lifestyle vlogs, nobody's gonna nobody's gonna pay for that. Based on the prank specifically, like I don't, I don't know. Anybody's like, oh wow, this person tricked me into thinking she was pregnant. This is awesome. Let me go check out her Patreon. It doesn't make any sense. Very low. Patreon. I don't understand that Patreon isn't explicitly for corn, but you can still put images up on there. You just can't put anything with insertion or anything, or like any, you know, you can still put like boobs and stuff up there. You just can't do anything super provocative okay just keep that in mind i know this for a fact okay i'm a fucking i'm, a, I'm an educated individual because the only exposure i have to this person is you know them faking a miscarriage for money might influence this video just a tiny bit sorry i guess now a little bit of context before we jump into this video from what i've gathered so far it seems like this youtuber took a break from youtube for a while and then a couple of weeks ago came back with a fake pregnancy announcement then yesterday they uploaded a video titled i lost the baby in which caroline reveals that this entire pregnancy was fake and this was a social experiment to make ah uh, Ah, yes, social experiment, of course. A point about parasocial relationships. I don't see how it would make a point about parasocial relationships. I, 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 I mean, <laughs> uh, okay. I don't see how saying parasocial relationships are one-sided relationships where one person invests time, interest, and emotional energy into another person who is completely unaware of those existence. Sure, I don't think that like that's a big deal. Like a small parasocial relationship is like, oh, I like Papa God a lot. Like I'm interested in what he's doing in his day to day. Like I'll check him out. Like, oh, this is interesting. There's nothing really wrong with that. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the bigger issue is if they become obsessive. So this isn't actually doesn't do anything. This isn't like a commentary about parasocial relationships. This is a commentary about being manipulative and then using parasocial relationships as an excuse. This is just stupid. Which I don't know about you guys, but to me, that sounds like the biggest load of horse shit I've ever heard. Yeah, but for course. you to form your own opinion, I'll let you hear it from the horse's mouth. Let's begin. Please subscribe. Okay, guys, I lost a baby, and I don't know exactly where I put it. It, it has to be around here somewhere. Okay, so some of you guys are probably wondering... No, I am not pregnant. And I'm sure some of you are shocked. I'm sure some of you are not surprised at all. Did, men, did people really care? Um... <laughs> okay. Incredible. I'm sure some of you don't care, but some of you might be asking... <laughs> okay, so quick break here. This well, as you can see, she has a very uh, she has a very fun artistic editing style where she does a lot of pauses and little zoom ins and loud sounds so children can be like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that would have been good for her baby. Unfortunately, it's not real. This is pretty much completely unrelated to the subject matter, but uh, I want to ask you guys a question. I've always had a pretty simple editing style. My videos are pretty bare bones when it comes to the editing. What? Yeah, I like that. What are your thoughts on that? I ask this because this style of video is literally my least favorite thing to watch on the planet. Me too. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, everybody's going to have a different style. I'm not, a, I'm, I like very simplistic edits. I, I just appreciate information being shown to me. I think that that, that's why I've seen this guy's content every once in a while, August the and I'm like, oh, that's pretty chill on it. Like, it's pretty fun. It's interesting. It's engaging. Um, but like the zoom in, I don't know. I feel like this person is the kind of person who thinks that it's super artsy that the way that they they edit stuff. Like, wow, look at me. Like, zoom in out. It's just annoying. It's flashy. It keeps like I guess it, it keeps people's attention who can't focus on a video for more than three seconds without turning it off. So. <laughs> And that's nothing against Caroline. Well, I mean, I guess it kind of is. It's her editing style. But, you know, different strokes. But for me, I... Oh, yeah. Different strokes, baby. Cannot stand when a video is like, hey, 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 hey. hey. Bet that, you bet she thought it was a slam dump. It probably was. Her her, her, um, her thing. Yeah. See, nobody in her audience doesn't care. If you're mad at Caroline, then you must be new here. Having empathy does not equal a parasocial relationship. Be for real. That's true. Um. Yeah, her audience probably doesn't care that much. Hey, 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 are you watching? Don't look away. Why are you looking away? Don't look away. Don't look away. Don't look away. It's like, damn. It's 30 seconds in and I think I've heard four different songs. When you're a content creator, the line between entertainment and reality She looks like she needs a little chapstick. is very blurry. Your audience Maybe, but not really. Audience will become very attached to an abstraction of yourself. And the odd thing is that this connection can become very personally meaningful oh to the viewers, God. whilst not being personally meaningful to the creator. It's 
So, yeah. bro, we got the we we got the disconnect. We have the creator thinking that they're saying something like super intelligent, like provocative, like, "Oh, okay." Your attention is monetarily valuable to me. And unless you have some narcissistic tendencies, which a lot of us do, the experience of having a parasocial relationship with your audience Well, I love I love the buzzwords personally. It's my favorite. Audience can be very uncomfortable. Okay, so this is a very fair statement. It would make perfect yeah, sense sure. to talk about this in literally any other video. Again, not really sure why this is the avenue she chose. Cuz she's bored. She doesn't make content in a while and she needs something that'll be super grippy so she decided to come back with some dumb shit. Yeah. But if you are not a somewhat large content creator, I think it's hard to fully imagine the dynamic of a parasocial relationship on the side of the creator. As a whole, just ignore everybody. Don't talk to any of your fans. <laughs> Uh, I am very. Would I ever consider selling the Papa Good Archive channel? Like, rep no, I wouldn't sell it. That's like my old channel. It's just there. It's just old stuff for me. I'm grateful for my audience. I'm very happy that you guys choose to watch my videos. It means a lot to me, and it would mean a lot to me even if I wasn't making money from it. However, I don't know you. Shit, I wouldn't made shit to me if it wasn't making money. I mean, it's cool. People like to tune into me, but obviously, I'm trying to make a dollar. You know, I don't make dishonest content. I'm just saying that's like a pretty big motivator. It's chill though. I love the people who will show up in the in the in the uh, stream. Will usually chat with. I'll read what you guys say and stuff. Like this person's asking me about my grippy. Incredible. You know, I love I love the I love these comments. <laughs> that's usually the best way that I get feedback is through my streams. I try not to read comments too much because I try to like you know I read them occasionally, but I try not to like really respond to them. But I'm more likely to respond on stream. But that's just a boundary that I've set, so I don't sit there on my phone all day going like, oh, what the fuck, you know. You. People will watch hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos from a content creator, and for some people, they begin to think they know that person. I've had people DM me things. Or you do know me. Send me money. Or comment things directed towards me. If you let my me tongue your bussy till it's squeaky clean, I will pay you, Papa. All right. Incredible. That no sane individual on this planet would ever walk up to a stranger and say, and that's effectively what you're doing. I have no idea. <laughs> that's fucking wild, brother. Who you are. Furthermore, you also have no idea who I am. You know, August the Duck, which is pretty close, but is not a one-to-one -one copy of August. You probably know me better than you than these people's audiences know them, only because I'm sitting here chatting on like a live stream. You know, usually with content like this, that's good. I'm not criticizing it or anything. Not hers. I'm talking about August the Duck. It's usually like, hey, here's what I want to show you of myself, which we all do a little bit of, but like I'm here. I'm going to have good and bad days. So you're going to catch me on like a fucking bad day when I'm doing some kind of content, you know? So, August in real life. So, yeah. And I'm going to act like a fucking dookie head. Parasocial relationships can be pretty uncomfortable, but uh, why are we using this to talk about that? I'll give you an example. When I was 15 and I first started making content. I there you go. She was 15, so she has a warped reality view of what the world looks like. I had a lot of people threaten to rape me every day. Okay. Wow, incredible. That was, <laughs> that was uh, something. Hey, Mr. Gut, who broke to donate, but I was wondering if you had an opinion on Ludwig Destiny drama. Yeah, I'll probably release a video about that like tomorrow. And if you could imagine, this was not fun. <laughs> and the problem with this, yeah. beyond the obvious, is that there's no meaningful way to respond to this interaction. Okay, you just block them. You just don't, yeah, you, not much you can do. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit uncomfy to talk about, but I that's a bummer, bro. <laughs> and it's important. I don't want to say this is where she loses me because that doesn't really describe what I'm thinking. I think that- Oh, I'm encapsulated now. Now I'm curious what she has to say. There's a fork here, yeah, which sort of it. helps me understand why she thought that making these kinds of videos was a good segue to talking about parasocial relationships. Obviously, somebody saying this to another person is awful. I know, making really groundbreaking statements here. But at least to me, unless I'm missing out on some context here, this does not sound like a parasocial interaction. A per yeah, that actually might be true. It might, I-, I that probably isn't a parasocial. I was, actually, that's a good point. Like, it's probably, it's somebody that's going to say that to you probably doesn't watch your content. Although maybe they do. It sounds more like a, I hate this person, so I'm going to say something violent and mean to them. Um, and then the added layer is that they're a girl, right? So that they're going to say something that's like an ad additionally like uh, charged when it comes to like gender, typically at least. But her fans probably aren't saying this. It's probably my fans. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Person threatening somebody on the internet is a person threatening somebody on the internet. People threaten other people for doing things they don't like all the time. That doesn't make it okay, obviously, but just because it was on the internet, I don't know if that qualifies as parasocial. Like yeah. I said, I could be missing out on some context here. I'm not trying to over... Sounds like edgy. 
Yeah, that, it's actually a good point. It's still wrong, but I wouldn't necessarily call it parasocial. That's fair. First step because this is a pretty sensitive <laughs> subject, but I think it's important to address because the way she's going to explain the reason she decided to do this as a way to open up a conversation about parasocial relationships combined with this statement is kind of evidence that Caroline here might have a flawed understanding of what a parasocial relationship is. The offender has anonymity and in some way, so do I. So I'm not treating them like a real person. They're not treating me like a real person. Again, sure. that's like the opposite of a parasocial relationship. A parasocial <laughs> Yeah, true. So it's a relationship the viewer thinks they know the real you. Okay. They think they're really your friend, they're really your buddy. So no, they're not treating you like you're not a real person. They are. That's kind of the entire issue with relationships like this. I don't know, this is, this is just bothering me right here. Put some like chapstick or something. That just looks painful. You know, I'm getting, I'm making me in pain. You know, when you hear somebody talk about something and it makes you like, you know, like you hear a story of someone got kicked in the balls and your balls start to hurt. It's like this, you know? You're not real, and I'm not real. Ah! Sorry, I disappeared. And none of pretend that happened. This is pretend I added it to make me look like I disappeared. Real, and yet the effect that we have on each other is still very real. I will present kind of myself on the internet because I want to desperately be seen and to connect to other people. And a lot of you okay. come on the internet. A no, a lot of you will. Oh, I definitely come on the internet. Engage on the internet because. You want to be seen, and because you desperately want to connect to someone. I lied about being- I guess. I mean, I personally don't necessarily want to connect to anybody. I just like talking about stupid shit. I like talking about anything. I'm just like, I just like to talk. That's literally it. I've got nothing of the value. I just want to talk, 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 talk. Being pregnant as a joke. And the joke is not that pregnancy under strenuous circumstances is funny. The joke is not that the audience was gullible enough to believe that I was pregnant. The joke is you connected to something that wasn't real. Yeah, I don't think that there was a joke. This is a classic instance of somebody saying that something was a joke when that it wasn't. Um, that said, this person just wanted to be provocative for attention and then said it was just a joke. And then also says, well, no, it's not a joke. It's actually a social experiment. Oh, well, it's just an excuse to be on a hyperbole. If she had just been like, yup, I'm just, I was being dumb as fuck. Sure. But like, this is the thing is it's a lot of excuses. It's bad behavior on purpose and then trying to make it seem like it's either cultured or funny. Um, it's not. You know? And I have become something that isn't real. Okay, so this is so fucking stupid that it hurts. There is a fundamental difference between something not being real and a real human lying about something. You can't say that you cared about something that's not real unless the person knew it wasn't real. Sure, the pregnancy was not actually happening, but your viewers did not know that. It was real to them. If you made a skit or something with a pregnant character, that is a pregnancy that's not real. But lying about being pregnant and tricking people into thinking you are, you can't just be like, look at you, you cared about somebody being pregnant the only time it's acceptable to lie about being pregnant is when like you're sneaking alcohol into the belly and you're trying to get it into like a movie theater or something you know or snacks because this is the thing why is it so expensive to buy food at the goddamn movie theater okay i don't understand it um because here's my thing all right you could sit there and be like well the movie theater obviously wants to make money in every uh scenario there's a balance between how much you can charge um, to make as much money. So like, there's always a thing. People always try to charge as much as possible to make as much money as they can without overstepping. And I feel like though, movie theaters have overstepped, right? Imagine that you go to a movie theater and get like a reasonably priced, maybe a little bit of an upcharge for a meal. I would pay every time. Same thing with like candy, right? But I, since it's not reasonable, I go and I take food from outside the business and I bring it in. I don't care, right? Like I will usually get a popcorn there, and, you know, maybe a drink. So that's 20 bucks. It's fucking insane. But I'm getting like candy or jerky or whatever else. I'm bringing in from outside the theater. I'm going to go to a Target or a 7-Eleven. And 7-Eleven's already upcharged to bring it in because it's so much cheaper. So I feel like if you guys kind of lowered your prices a little bit, maybe added like a restaurant style kind of a thing or something like that, I feel like you'd make a tremendous amount of money. Make the movie theaters like just a better experience, comfortable seats, decent food, um, you know, maybe a piss break because I have diabetes, <laughs> maybe a pee pee break. I don't know, but I feel like maybe they would pull a little bit more viewership because like imagine it's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go here and I'm going to get like a nice meal that's not going to cost me an arm and a leg. Oh, great. It might still cost me my legs because I'm diabetic. So if it's too much sugar, but <laughs> I don't know. It just, we need to kind of reconsider what it means to go to the movie theater because it's always going to be cheaper to just watch the movie at home. And the whole point of the movie theater is to provide a unique experience that you can 
go and watch there. Yes, you have the big screen. That's part of the unique, unique experience. Comfortable seats, arguable if you have a better, more comfortable couch at home. But like, I don't know, give me like a nice sit down dinner. You know, I understand it might cost a little more because then the people have to clean up better, but the etiquette's just not there. And your workers don't give a shit, by the way, about patrolling and making sure I'm not bringing f- outside food in because they hate their jobs. So, or you left a comment saying good luck or something. You are the victim of a parasocial relationship. There oh, is a no. difference I between what you are saying you did and what actually happened. It's kind of hard to articulate it how I'm thinking about it in my head, but there's a difference. We all come here to find oh, this I connection do. over and over again. I just, I don't think there's that much, like, she's putting so much energy. You all come here for a unique connection. You're putting a lot of energy into this. I I don't think that everybody comes to to somebody for a unique connection. I think a lot of people just watch somebody because they find it an interesting or entertaining thing. So I don't, like, how much of a unique connection do you really think people are coming in to, to, like, get from you? I, you know, you're doing like little skits. They're probably there's like, oh, I find this person entertaining, but you're putting so much value and weight into this. It's not that deep. So. And we don't really find it until now when you subscribe to my Patreon. <laughs> what a bitch. Sorry. Holy shit. She's actually trying to play into the parasocial relationship. Oh, yeah. That's fucking right. This entire stunt <laughs> has been an advertisement for my Patreon. And this is this where- is an entire stunt has been an advertisement to get money out of people because she doesn't want to produce content. She's literally fucking buggy. Subscribe to my Patreon for what? What are we going to get out of this? Or we really just kind of go off the rails. I want to give you guys one guess as to how much each month her top Patreon tier would cost you. It's oh, like $300. We just saw it. Over $300. Yeah. And the unfucking believable irony of all this is that the only people subscribing to a Patreon for a channel like this, where all of the videos seem to be very, very low budget and spending $50 or $300 a <laughs> month to line the pockets or of- Or $7. That's the cheapest one, which is still expensive in my opinion. A random person are the those in a parasocial relationship with you, Caroline. I mean, holy shit. Yeah, I think. Well, yeah, I think that's her point. I think she wanted to. This was the whole art piece is uh, make this video, call it parasocial, pretend, uh, imply that parasociality or whatever you call it is bad and then act- intentionally and actively lean into the parasocial behavior. She just looks stupid when you think about it. Take the miscarriage to tell society. But it sounds like uh, she doesn't care. It sounds like she's on her way out of as a content creator and has no real interest in creating content anymore. Um, and so she's just burning. She's burning a bridge. So like from that perspective, I kind of get it. She hasn't posted in over a year. And then she made some dumbass things about how she has a baby or she's pregnant. Like, yeah, it seems like she's just she's burning out. She's like, I'm not doing YouTube anymore. I might as well burn through and make money. And I kind of get it. You know, sure. I mean, why not? I guess. <laughs> How crazy bad parasocial relationships are. But uh, if you have one with me, yeah, give me your fucking money. Caroline, you are genuinely the most tone deaf person I've ever covered on this channel. And that's a pretty high bar. I'm also announcing that I'm coming back to YouTube. Listen, I wanted. Oh, I guess I was wrong. To- I guess I was wrong, guys. Sorry. Come back to you. Okay, I never mind. I changed my mind. It sounds like if she wants to go back to YouTube, she's trying to come back with a bang. So there you go. YouTube. If she wanted to do that, she should have just come back on October 7th and explain to everyone why I had been gone and what had happened to me in that time that made me want to come back. But some of you in my audience- Why don't you just fucking tell people in your video? Are pretty weird. And I don't blame any of you. You know, you can't <clears throat> help being weird, but I didn't think that it would be healthy for me to expose myself like that to all of you. And that's wow. why I decided to keep a lot of my more sensitive information behind the paywall. Where I- you don't think it would have been healthy to just be like, hey guys, I've been gone for a while. I'm going to come back now. Here's why. What's unhealthy about that? What the? F- what does that even mean? What do you <laughs> like? Not every instance of me telling you about my life or a creator telling you about their lives is an unhealthy you dynamic. And if it is unhealthy, it's unhealthy behind a paywall, regardless. So why not just be like, "Hey guys, I'm back. The past year, I've been exploring myself and blah blah blah, and I did this and I did that." Like you don't have to sit here and be like, "I'm fucking border. I'm gonna jump off a building." He's like, "What are you?" <laughs> What are you talking about? I would hope some of the audience would be more intentional with how they interact with me because now it costs money to do so. Holy fuck! 
she's got it. She's getting that buy-in on there, guys. What is it called? Uh, there's like a particular thing where you feel uh, I don't know. It's, what is it called? There's like a thing where like you put money into something, so you feel like you have to keep putting money into it. What is that called? I forget what it's called. Uh, I didn't watch this far into the video, and I feel like I'm being fucking pranked. Caroline, do you hear the words coming out of your mouth? Yeah, no. This is uh, an instance of somebody who's like probably like a little more intelligent than like the average person uh, who decided to come back to YouTube with a bang and then make up 300 different excuses about it instead of like coming back and focusing on providing like good content. That's what this is. So she's all too smart for her own good. She's, but it, she's not smart enough to come up with the actual reason for what she's doing. Uh, she's just for money. It's an attention grab. It's a money. It's a money grab. It's coming back and pleading for attention by trying to do some fake uh, pregnancy bullshit. I mean, this is this is next level shit, guys. So let me get I this straight. Shit. In the video where you are talking about the uncomfortable and negative nature of parasocial relationships, you are opening up the opportunity for people in your audience to pay you money to learn sensitive private information about your actual three hundred dollars a month gets you my social security number, but just one letter what number per month incredible real life is this is this a bit no like actually nine months it would take <gasps> the baby is her social security number is this a skit or something i don't think i've ever covered anything on youtube that has got a sunk cost fallacy thank you this visceral of a reaction out of me yeah parasocial relationships those things are stinky but if you want to think you're really my friend stinky. if you want to think you really know the <laughs> real me which uh, i know you do because i'm having you pay money for this join my patreon there your parasocial relationship can get infinitely worse you're kind of kind of based kind of based welcome guys i'm back I'm back and I'm back to making YouTube content. I'm she's funny on the Best Friends podcast. Is that what she's on? Is that what she does? So excited to be back. What better way to return to YouTube? What more ceremonious way to return to YouTube than by bringing back the advice videos? That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Doctor, not Doctor Caroline, is back in the building. So if you are looking for advice, because I am looking for content, be sure to email your questions and concerns to constantourquestions at yahoo.com. I'm almost certain. Not seeing a Best Friends podcast. What the fuck is he talking about? That's the email. I could be wrong. Okay, so you know the joke of experiencing all seven stages of grief at once? I've never really understood why people say that. Like, I've never- It's funny because you see the fake belly, and I feel like um, if you watch this skeptically, you'd see she's not pregnant. She doesn't look like- she has no facial changes. When people went- well, I guess people get pregnant, like women, typically, but you know, whatever. When people get pregnant, you will see uh, visible signs of that pregnancy. You usually don't just get like a belly. Usually there's changes to like your breasts. I'm not, I'm literally not trying to be like sexual about this at all. I'm being like legitimate. Um, like the way that your um, face is kind of structured a little bit. I've seen some women talk about how their nose gets different. It's very interesting. So this person doesn't even look pregnant at all never really gotten why people say somebody's experiencing that. Now I do. It's happening to me right now. I literally cannot believe what I'm hearing, and it's making me angry. I'm shocked. Oh, best friends TV. I'm bargaining with myself. Maybe not all seven, because I refuse to accept this. Let's, let's reel it back one more time. It's the comeback tour. Let's really hammer this. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Dude. ...is home today. In this video, where Caroline talks Let's about see. how bad parasocial relationships are, she finishes it out by saying she's bringing back a series in which people that she does not know write into her, and she responds personally to a person she does not know, giving them advice. Damn, she's... I mean, she's... Uh, okay. I mean, I do lazy content, but she's lazier than me. You don't even... <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, all right, I'm coming back. I don't know what I want to do. Uh, I'll answer your questions. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if this... No differences is I'm not uh, pretending to get pregnant, you know? This is a bit. Hats off. Now, real... I birthed something fucking mean yesterday, though, dude. That's fucking crazy. It was huge poop. Quick, before we wrap all of this up, I want to go back to that fork I was talking about. That difference in mindset between me and Caroline when thinking mindset. about a parasocial relationship. Because mindset. what might be the craziest part of this video to me is that, in my opinion, what she's done here would not even highlight a parasocial relationship. Being happy for a random person when they announce... Yeah, I kind of agree. Pregnancy and being sad for a random person when they announce they had a miscarriage. That's not parasocial. That's called being a decent person. Yep. You don't have to trick agree. yourself into thinking that you know a content creator and then try best friends today. Bro, you're killing me with the fucking different things. You're actually their friend in order to say something like, hey, congratulations on the pregnancy. <sighs> or, hey, I'm sorry that you lost your baby. If this was a much, Hello, much bro. smaller event. This is this is what she's on. Oh, OK. What do they what do they do? Is it skit channel? So we made some pretty poor financial decisions you guys sit there we're back or we'll be back okay this whole thing just okay it's a it's a skit channel okay cool whatever 
event. Sure, go crazy. Highlight parasocial relationships with ants. But big life events are like a universally congratulated thing. You meet two people that you've never met in your entire life and they say, hey, we just got married yesterday. You're not going to be like, well, I don't... Uh... Who fucking ass, bitch? And you smack him. That's what I do. Really know you well enough to congratulate you? I wouldn't want to be parasocial. So not only with all the Patreon bullshit have you proven that you don't actually think parasocial relationships are that bad. Either that or you're just willing to engage in them and make them significantly worse as long as it makes you money. Your whole premise on exposing them didn't even work from the beginning. That's a double L for you, Caroline. Might be time to change your name. Well, guys, I feel like I have been on a roller coaster during this recording session. A roller coaster in which I am presented with many things that make my head go ouch. This video has probably taken years off... Yeah, that's why I take Motrin when I go on roller coasters. My life. I do not think I have been this stressed out by a video in years. Genuinely. I actually hope that this is just a skit and I've made myself look incredibly stupid in this video. That would be... F yeah, I mean, it is some kind of a skit. We'll take a look at the actual video. Favorable to me knowing this actually exists. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. Caroline uh, is a comedian. And this was obvious bit that people fell for. Oh, Okay. It sounds like she did this bit to try to announce her return and pretend to have some kind of intellectual thought about parasocial relationships. And then was just using like a joke as like a way to just be, I'm just a comedian. It's okay. I can do, I can say whatever I want. Like, obviously. Yeah, that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe. Yeah, pretty cool video. I guess I'm curious about her the actual videos that she put out there a little bit. Ovulating and I had like, a, I'm ovulating and I had like a plug of blood come out and I was like, oh my God, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I'm 20 years old and I am figuring out what to do with my life. And I personally don't think I should have to choose to do anything in life. I think I should just do life. I think I should just not die and live and that's life. But I need so many people around me that are encouraging me to pick a thing, to be a thing. Like everyone's like committing to a bit. That's what life feels like. I'm committing to the bit of having a relationship with this woman who I don't really like. I'm committing to the bit of having this job that I don't really like. I'm committing to the bit of living in a democracy. I'm committing to the bit. I feel like it's okay to not know what I'm doing in life because I'm young. I'm hot. I'm funny. I'll figure it out. Life will go on and I will, by default, be. Yeah, I'm not interested anymore. I just realized that this this is, again, this is what I said at the beginning. It's like a super artsy person <laughs> who pretend it has like a, uh, I don't know. I'm not trying to be fucking rude, but it's just like super artsy person probably trying to figure out the way the world is and thinks that they know something about the world no one else does and tries to communicate that. It's just like over-edited, uh, silly goosery. All right, fake pregnancy, baby. Pogger.